What's up guys, I hope you're having a great day. I've got a really awesome video for you this time. Now most of you are probably here from my video about recreating a scene from Avatar The Last Airbender. If not, you can click right here to check that one out. I put a lot of work into it for you. But this is my simple guide to rotoscoping, and I'm going to go ahead and explain what that is, so if you're already familiar with the term, you can click here to skip right to the tutorial. But essentially, rotoscoping is when an animator takes video footage from real life and draws over it to create an animated version. Now, I chose to do a scene from The Last Airbender instead of actual footage because it's one of my all-time favorite shows, but the process is exactly the same either way. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first off, let's create a new document. and We want to match the size of our document to the size of our video source. So mine is 1280 by 720. And if you don't know the size, it's fine. You can just go with the default and scale the video after you import it. But I'm going to go ahead and center this and maybe zoom out a bit. So now to get our video file, we need to go to import and select import video and then click the third option and if your video is in FLV format then click that but otherwise click browse and we're gonna go ahead and navigate to find our video source so there we go and now open it and I'm gonna deselect include audio because that would slow down this whole process quite a bit so now we click next again and then finish and it might take a second and boom now we move it into place here and let's make it a symbol so right click and click convert to symbol and then press OK and you should get this message it just needs to create enough frames for the video so go ahead and say yes and we need to trace it so go to properties and click style and select alpha and I'm gonna bring it down to about 18 looks good to me so now I'll zoom in here and create a new layer for drawing and then lock the layer for the source video and now making sure we're still in layer 2 we start drawing so for the drawing phase you just want to outline the details of the characters if you're tracing over a cartoon then it's easy enough to just go over the back lines that are already there. Do your best to not have any big gaps in between the paintbrush strokes. That can be a real headache later on once we start coloring everything. And I'm only going to do these first 15 frames for this tutorial. But this step is very simple. Just go over all the outlines of all the characters, including their clothes and accessories. And then once you finish with that frame, you add a new frame and keep going. It can seem a little tedious at times, but it's so worth it once you finish. Just throw on some music and you'll be done before you even know it. Another cool thing about this type of animation process is that you don't have to copy what you see perfectly. You can change things to your own style or even adjust small features to make them better in your own eyes. Just working on this one project has actually taught me a whole lot more about professional animation than I was previously aware of. So if you're rotoscoping over an animated show, like I am in this video, then use it as a tool to learn how the show was created and put that into your own creations. However, if you're rotoscoping over live footage, that can still be a great educational tool, just in different ways. You can use that experience to learn how objects and people in real life actually move and behave when you break them down frame by frame. You might even want to try both techniques and just see how much you can learn from simply tracing over the videos. Alright, so I've drawn over both Aang and Katara for these first 15 frames. And if I go back and scroll through slowly, it looks alright. I don't see any immediate problems. So now, let's create a new layer. And I'm going to call it Palette. And we need to be able to select the correct colors from our video source uh, directly from layer one. So let's go ahead and unlock layer one. And we'll go and turn the alpha all the way back up. And now we're going to go ahead and grab the actually lock layer one again. That's important. Uh, and now we'll make sure we're on the palette layer and grab the eyedropper tool. Now, as you can see, my eyedropper tool isn't working for some reason. It flickers between 
all these different colors and honestly just started this for the tutorial but even if I go over here where it's definitely solid it still isn't working if you guys have any idea how to fix this please let me know because I'm thoroughly confused and honestly pretty annoyed by this uh, but the show must go on so I'm just gonna have to recreate these colors as best as I can with the color creator but anyways select your color and then go to the brush tool and turn the size all the way up and make sure you're still in the palette layer and now you just draw a big blob anywhere on the background uh, just make sure not to cover up your characters at all and then you go to the next color I might be able to use something here actually yeah that's gonna need to be a bit darker probably I'll go ahead and fix that move it down some I might need to bring it dull it a bit that should be good actually I'll move it down just a bit here okay that should be good let's try that out yeah that works well enough for this so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these colors and I will get back to you guys in just a second alright guys so I have finished up the palette colors for Aang and now we're gonna grab the brush tool and go ahead and turn the size almost all the way down and now pick your color from the palette and go ahead and start outlining all the shapes that you see on the character um, and you can go ahead and fill it in as well as you can see it's pretty easy I'm just outlining the shapes as I said and then filling it in with the bucket tool and the reason for the palette layer is so that you get the exact color that you want every single time with the eyedropper tool if you don't select the right pixel every single time then your colors will be off for every frame so do your best to fill in even the tiny spots that you may have accidentally created during the drawing phase one amazing tip that I can give you will save you from probably rage quitting is to fill the fill large gaps option if you select the bucket fill tool and then go to the bottom of the tools panel you'll see an option for filling in gaps if you set that to fill large gaps you shouldn't have to worry about scouring your drawing for that one tiny gap between the brush strokes. Take it from me, that is not fun. Uh, another helpful tip is to find the best way of working that suits you. Some people like to start coloring from a certain point on the character and then work their way around the character and do that exact same process for every single frame, repeating that pattern until they finish. I prefer to just color whatever catches my eye until I finish the frame and then start at a different random spot on the next frame. To me that's less monotonous and it keeps me from getting bored but either way just figure out what works best for you and keeps you from getting tired and bored. Uh, the reason I do one character at a time is because I felt that that was easier for this specific scene but if you wanted to do more you could add to your palette layer and then do more than one character at a time uh, that's certainly possible but I'm gonna go ahead and let this time-lapse play out for anyone who wants to watch it completely but if you would like to skip it you can click here to go ahead and click to the next step
So I've finished up coloring ink, and I'm going to scroll through and check it. Now, you'll notice that I've only colored every other frame. That's because this show is animated on twos, meaning that only every other frame is actually animated. So watch when I go through these frames here. Only every other frame has a change in the character's poses. This makes it easier to animate because you'll get 24 full frames of animation, but you only have to draw 12. So the next step would be to copy and paste those colored frames to their duplicates. But first, I'm going to go through and color Katara because it would be pointless to copy and paste the frames when I still have work to do. So I'm going to do that and get back to you guys as soon as I finish. So as you can see, I've finished up coloring Katara. And before I actually copy and paste these frames, I want to show you something. So let's hide the source layer. And already, you can already see that there's holes. So let's go through and check all these frames real quick. That one looks okay. So it looks like I've missed her entire necklace here. And I've missed some places on Aang's clothes as well. So this is an important step for sure. It's always important to check your work as well as save once in a while. So I'll go ahead and paste the rest of these frames after I've finished all these gaps. And I'll see you guys in a second. So that's all finished up. And I'm going to go through one more time and scroll through here real slowly so as you can see they're all colored in pretty nicely uh, I'm not seeing any problems I think that looks good I'll turn the background layer on to see if maybe anything pops out but I don't think so I think that's it's all pretty good and I think the colors are looking pretty nice against the background as well and that's actually our next and final step is we're gonna take a snapshot of this frame to recreate the background image. So let's go to File and Export and Export Image. And I'm going to call it BG1 for background one. And make sure to export as a PNG, not a JPEG. And now click Minimum Image Area and change that to Full Document Size. And that keeps our ratio at 1280 by 720. And now click Export. And now I've already set this up for the tutorial because I feel like it'd be a bit boring even as a time lapse. But what you would normally do is open that image you just exported into Photoshop or GIMP or even Illustrator if you just want a vector image. And do your best to recreate the background or even create your own, which could be super fun. Just make sure to cover up the characters completely when doing that. And then we're going to create a new layer and label it background and move it underneath all the rest and then we're going to go to file import import to stage and find that background image that you just created and now click this little black dot to turn off the visibility of layer one and now if i zoom out you can see that i made a lot larger than the frame that's because if i didn't then it would just look like they're running in place so let's right click the background layer and insert a keyframe and now grab the image and we're going to go ahead and move it all the way over and then let's right click in the middle and create a classic tween and i'm going to click show frame so we get this right perspective we don't have extra space here and uh, finally i'll click the loop button and i'll play it back here and there you have it. You'd be surprised how much you can actually get done in just a few hours of working with this technique. Uh, if you stayed this long, I would really appreciate any suggestions or ideas for things you'd like to see in future videos. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.